We don't have to be on birth control, even if you don't want to have kids. Is that women were told that we can get pregnant any day of the month. This actually yeah, is not yeah. true. We really? can only really get pregnant between sorry, about like six, six, eight days in a month. Whoa. And so why are we suppressing our ovulation for 30 days when we only have about a six to eight day window? Yeah, I thought it could just happen any day. Yeah, That's no, it's crazy. not true. I know. Wow, they don't teach us stuff. I know. Welcome back to the show, guys. Digital Social Hour. I'm your host, Sean Kelly, here with an awesome guest for you guys today, Courtney Swan. How's it going? Good. How are you? Thanks so much for having me. I'm good. I can't wait to learn about health today. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, I take health very serious. So it's something that like growing up, you, you're you not really realizing how much stuff you're doing wrong. And then you realize it later and you're like, wow. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's not really taught in schools, right? Like yeah. for some reason, we don't really teach. We teach the very basics of nutrition. But outside of that, a lot of what I talk about is really not mainstream known and we're not teaching it to kids. And right. so you have to go through, um, for the most part, what's happening is a lot of people are getting really sick mm -hmm. and then they're realizing, oh my God, I'm being exposed to all these different chemicals and there's pesticides in my food and um, I'm eating a lot of really inflammatory foods. And then they mm -hmm. get sick before they realize like, wow, I really need to pay attention to this and start changing my diet. Right. So what foods have a lot of pesticides in them? So there, well, okay. So it depends if you're not eating organic, mm -hmm. it's pretty much guaranteed that there's pesticides on there. Unless wow. of course, if you're going to the farmer's market, if you're going to the farmer's market and you can actually talk to the farmers that are growing the food mm -hmm. and ask them, are you using pesticides and herbicides, fungicides, stuff like that? Many times they just don't have the resources and the money to pay for the organic stamp because it's mm -hmm. very expensive. But if you're just going into a conventional grocery store, it's pretty much guaranteed that if you're buying conventional and you're buy not buying organic, they're being sprayed with pesticides. And well, let me clarify this because a lot of people, I get heat about this a lot on Instagram because <laughs> people will say, well, organic is sprayed with pesticides too. That is true. But the, the ones that we have studied the most and that we know to be very harmful for human health are the ones that are being banned in organic produce. Like for mm -hmm. example, glyphosate, which is being sprayed very heavily on our produce here in America. Mm -hmm. And that's one that's being sprayed very heavily on conventional, but it is banned in organic. Interesting. And what, what exactly, so glyphosate, what does that do to the body? Ooh, a lot of different things. So it acts like an antibiotic. And we know now that this is really detrimental to our gut health mm. because what happens is that it kills off not only the bad bacteria in our body, but also the good bacteria. And we need the good bacteria in our body for our guts or, or sorry, in our guts for our immune system. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it, it plays like a 98% role in our overall immune system. And we know that there's a direct connection between our gut and our brain with the vagus nerve. Mm. And so it's not only affecting our guts, but as a result, it's affecting our brains as well. And then not to mention um, pesticides in general, we just, especially with glyphosate, there's a lot of research coming out right now that there's a massive connection with cancer. Wow. And if you look up Monsanto and their litigations that they've been through, it's now Bayer. So Bayer bought out Monsanto mm -hmm. and they are in major litigations right now with farmers that are getting these crazy, really aggressive forms of cancer from using glyphosate. Wait, farmers are getting cancer? Yeah, in really, really big, like high numbers right now. Oh, that's scary. It's really scary. And so again, I tell people this too, not only should we be concerned about our health, but also the health of the workers that are on the farms every day. Right. And if you want to, if you want to make sure that we're taking care of their health as well, you want to buy organic because they're not being exposed to these really harmful toxic compounds. Mm. Man, yeah. that's scary. One of the things you talk about a lot also is these forever chemicals. So what, what foods have those in it? Uh, what foods have what in? The forever chemicals. Okay, so this is a tricky one because it's not, so it's not actually in our food, but uh, so forever chemicals are, are compounds. Um, there's many different ones. The most famous ones that we know about right now are PFASs or sometimes people call them PFAs. Mm -hmm. And um, forever chemicals mean that they don't break down easily in the environment. So they don't break down for decades. And the reason why they're showing up in our food is because we've been using them in, for example, like nonstick cookware. Mm. So anything that says nonstick, there was a, a compound used called Teflon that was being used a lot in nonstick pans. They've since, I think for the most part, phased out Teflon, but now there's other compounds that are forever chemicals that are being put in these nonstick um, Comp, yeah, the compounds basically. And you find them in everything, uh, waffle makers, air fryers, um, the toaster ovens, anything that has that nonstick coating. Wow. 
And then we're also now seeing it. I was just reading about this this morning. Actually, there was a study done pretty recently that they're finding these PFA forever chemicals in the wrappings of. Shout out to today's sponsor, Gusto. Something always comes up when you're running a small business. Well, Gusto's payroll and HR services can make that a little easier for you guys. Gusto was designed for you, the small business owner. They take the pain out of running a business, automatically calculating paychecks, filing payroll taxes, setting up open enrollment, all that stuff you don't like to do, Gusto does it all. If you want even more, they do time tracking, they do health insurance, they do 401k, onboarding, commuter benefits, other letters. They also have access to HR letters. You get the idea. They got pretty much everything you can think of. With Gusto, you can focus on the joy of running your own business. Super easy to set up and get started. And if you're moving from another provider, they'll transfer all their data for you. No surprise, 94% of customers recommend Gusto. Yes, that's 94%. Want all this and more with no hidden fees? Try it out for three months for free at gusto.com slash social. That's gusto.com slash social. Fast food packages mm. now. So um, the ones that tested the highest were Chick-fil-A, Sweet Green, and Arby's and Burger King. That's scary. I know. I used to like Chick Fil A. <laughs> My boyfriend loves Chick Fil A, oh, and I, I was dropping all this on him this uh, morning. I was like, "I'm you sorry." Broke his heart. I know. Yeah, I had to stop eating fast food because, <laughs> other than that, it's just not the healthiest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, outside of of that, you're already being exposed to these toxic chemicals, but then it's not real food. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it feels like we're just constantly dodging landmines these days. We really are. Yeah. Like, what what type of diet are you on right now? So I, my biggest thing is I always try to eat organic whenever possible. And I always mm. tell people, look, it's not about striving for perfection. It's about striving for consistency. For example, on this trip, I mean, you know, I was eating out, I was eating at restaurants that aren't, aren't serving organic food mm. and you do the best you can, but we have the most control in our own homes. So yeah. when you're buying your groceries at home, make sure if you can buy all, all organic. And so I'm, uh, I eat mostly organic I have to be gluten-free because I've had a wheat allergy that was diagnosed like 13 years ago. Mm. And then I really just try to focus on real food. I don't really subscribe to any particular diet per se. I just try mm. to eat whole real foods in their natural state as much as possible. Nice. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, exactly. One of the things I've seen you talk about that's kind of controversial is birth control. You're not a fan of it. No, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about actually. I think women were sold a lie with birth control. Mm. Um, and I know that's a very um, controversial statement to make, but we were sold that it's this very empowering compound um, that will give us our life back and our careers. And, and I don't want to discount that, of course. Um, and I think at the time that it had, um, it had amazing potential, but the problem is, is that we, what we now know about birth control is that it shuts off our ovulation. Mm. And this is so much more important than just fertility. Like even if women don't wanna have kids, ovulation serves so much more of a role in your life than just fertility. It's our overall vitality. And I tell women that your monthly period is your report card mm. for your health. And so depending on how well your body and how well your menstrual cycle is and your ovulation is gonna tell a lot about your overall health of your body. Right. And what happens with birth control is they shut ovulation, these hormones, these synthetic hormones shut ovulation off. So you're not even ovulating at all, which is a very natural process that women's bodies need to go through. Mm. And then it replaces our hormones with synthetic hormones. And we've been told that, that um, birth control balances hormones. This is not the case. It completely just negates all of our hormones, replaces our hormones with synthetic ones. Wow. And then it puts us at a higher risk for cancer, blood clots, which have many women, unfortunately, um, all sorts of autoimmune disorders. And then not to mention there's a direct connection with birth control and depression. Mm. And there was a study done in Sweden in 2018 where they studied um, 800,000 women from the ages of 8 to 30, mm. or I'm sorry, 12 to 30. Mm -hmm. And what they found was that they had a much higher incident of women going on antidepressants after going on birth control wow. because of the effect on the mood. That's so crazy because like so many people are on it. I know. It's really sad. Well, and now that we know all this, I try to tell people like, look, there's no shame um, it's pushed so hard on women. I know so many of my friends that were put on birth control when they were like 13 Teenagers, and they've been on yeah. it. Yeah. For like 10 years. And so if you've been on it for a long time, there's no shame in that. We do the best we can until we, you know, we know better and then we do better with the knowledge that we have. And so knowing this and knowing that there's so many other options now that we have and that we don't have to be on birth control, even if you don't want to have kids, there's mm. other ways like taking your basal temperature every morning 
and there's apps that track it. I use something called Natural Cycles. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it takes uh, an average of my temperature because I link it to my aura ring. Okay. And it takes an average of my temperature throughout the entire night. And then in the morning, I sync my aura ring with my Natural Cycles app. And then it tells me whether or not I'm fertile that day. Really? Mm -hmm. So you can know that day? Yeah. And that's Whoa. another thing is that women were told that we can get pregnant any day of the month. This actually yeah, is yeah. not true. We really? can only really get pregnant between about like six to eight months or sorry, six to eight days in a month. Whoa. And so why are we suppressing our ovulation for 30 days when we only have about a six to eight day window? Yeah, I thought it could just happen any day. Yeah, that's no, it's crazy. not true. I know. Wow, they don't teach this stuff. I know. It's six crazy. to eight days, that's only like a week out of the month. Exactly, yeah. Wow. And then during that time, like with my app, I mean, you just either abstain or you do other things, you know, for protection and then you're fine. That's good to know for a lot of girls watching because yeah, it used to be like almost cool if you were on birth control in high school. Oh, I remember, <laughs> it's so funny that you say that. So when I was in high school, the majority of my girlfriends got put on birth control when we were young. Yeah. Like none of, none of my friends were even having <laughs> and everyone was just getting on it to like balance their uh, hormones or for their acne or whatever. And I remember begging my mom. I was like, all my friends are on it. It's so cool to be on birth control. <laughs> and she was like, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Oh, so, so she helped you. Mm -hmm. Wow. She did. Yeah, yeah. My mom did the same with, uh, they tried to put me on ADD med medication in like yeah. fourth grade or something. Yeah. And I was like, no, I want this. Like, it'll make me cool. <laughs> yeah. That shit's terrible for you. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. mentioned acne earlier. So have there been any linkages with diet and acne or supplements? Yeah. So, you know, the thing with acne is that anything that's happening on your skin is a symptom that something is off balance in your body. It's your body trying to tell you that something is off. Hmm. And I tell people that's the same thing with like, say, eczema or psoriasis. It's a symptom that your body um, is trying to tell you like a warning sign, like, hey, we need to pay attention to this. Um, acne is inflammatory and it's often linked to certain foods. So um, a lot of people have dairy sensitivities. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, if you're struggling with acne, I would first cut out any, um, well, first of all, uh, cut out dairy. There's also a link with really high levels of B12. Mm. And I actually learned this from my friend, um, Celeste Thomas. She's an amazing follow on Instagram, by the way. Um, she specifically um, healed her acne with her diet. And she did a video once that blew my mind. So you know those Celsius drinks? Yeah, yeah. They're really high in B vitamins. And apparently they're so high in B vitamins, they can actually be leading to your acne. Whoa. And then all these women were writing comments saying like, oh my God, wait, I drink like two a day and I've been really struggling with acne. Yeah. So there's a big link with B vitamins. Um, also, if you're not eating organic meat that's being injected with um, antibiotics and hormones, yeah. the hormones are also going to probably disrupt your gut and mm. lead to um, inflammation with acne. And then I would also say seed oils. They're incredibly inflammatory. Mm -hmm. um, and any sort of nuts. If you're eating a ton of nuts, there's also a link to acne. I noticed that because I used to eat those and I'd break out instantly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I didn't know about the B vitamins. I just ordered B6 last night. So now I'm a little skeptical. Well, you just want to make sure that your B levels are in range and you're yeah. not taking super high levels. Usually what happens, because I don't want to scare people because B vitamins are incredibly important. And to be honest, most people are deficient. Where we get into a problem is if you're taking a B vitamin every day and then you're drinking, let's say, an energy drink, drink that's really high in B vitamins. Mm -hmm. And then you have something else. Because I feel like they're, they're putting vitamins in so many different drinks and foods are, and yeah. stuff now. Um, that you just want to be careful that you're not going over the limit. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to know. One of the things I like that you do on your social media is you go to the grocery store, you go aisle by aisle, you film like, oh, this is good. This is bad for you. What are some things you've seen companies do to hide bad ingredients on their packaging? You know, so they, well, one thing that's really funny, they, they'll put different names for, um, different foods. Like for example, um, rapeseed, which mm -hmm. is a such a horrible name for an oil. <laughs> rapeseed oil um, is found in uh, like a lot of oat milks. And rapeseed is just another word for canola oil because canola mm. comes from the rapeseed. And so they're trying, which is so funny because rapeseed is such an aggressive word. Yeah. But they know that people are now starting to pay attention to like, let's say canola oil. So they'll put a different word on there for wow. the, the compound. Um, another one is um, instead of having to, so when you look at an ingredient label, um, the ingredients are in order with how much each ingredient is in there. So let's say, for example, you're looking at a package and the first ingredient is cane sugar. Mm -hmm. That means that there's more cane sugar than anything else in this product. Mm. So often what companies will do in order to make it look like there's not as much sugar in there is that they'll break up the sugar into a bunch of different words and different forms of it. So wow. so that then it'll be a lot lower down the list and maybe they're hoping that people won't like notice it. Yeah. So for example, they'll put like, coconut sugar and then down the line it'll be like malitol or dextrose or like all these different words 
And I encourage people to listening to just Google this. There's something like 30 different words or like forms of sugar now. Mm-hmm. Like I said, dextrose, it's a corn sweetener. Um, there's malitol. Um, obviously, there's like high fructose corn syrup. There's cane sugar. There's coconut sugar. There's so many different forms of it. Yeah. And they'll break it up into a couple different ones and then try to kind of hide it in there. That's they, scary. Yeah. There, wow. There's a really big thing happening right now called greenwashing. And I always tell people, make sure that you're not just buying your packages based off of the advertising on the front. Cause that's really all it is. It's like a billboard for the mm. product on the front. Right. You always want to turn it around and look at the back and look at the ingredients because the front is going to of course sell you like this is natural. And they're going to try to depict a, yeah, a yeah. photo of, you know, hens roaming <laughs> like grass yeah, pastures yeah, yeah. or whatever, you know? And then you look at the back and you see that it's full of sugar and inflammatory oils and, you know, processed ingredients. Mm-hmm. So you always want to make sure that you're reading the ingredient labels. Man, I can't believe there's canola oil and oat milk. They were marketing that like it was healthy, like a milk alternative. I know. It's really unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a fan of oat milk and I can tell you why. What? Because of the seed oil or? Yeah. So there's a couple different reasons. Even if you're making it at home, the problem with oat milk is that I call it starch juice. Mm -hmm. It's really, really starchy milk. Mm. And so what happens is people are often having it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach in a latte. And it's going to raise your blood sugar levels. And then what's hap- what happens is that afterwards, then you crash and then you crave more sugar. Mm. And if you have really starchy, sugary foods or drinks first thing in the morning, you're going to be chasing that sugar all day because your body is going to be looking for that quick fix, that quick energy. And so you're going to be raising your blood sugar, crashing, going up and down. And we really want to focus on really satiety, like... Um, filling foods first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. And that's like protein, good healthy fats. Like this morning I had smoked salmon with a little bit of guacamole and an egg. Mm. And I had gluten-free toast, but you really want to focus on more like high protein, high fat. And the thing with oat milk is that it's going to, you know, it's going to cause your blood sugar to crash. Not to mention, I mentioned glyphosate earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, Glyphosate is an herbicide that is very heavily sprayed on non-organic food in this country right now. Mm -hmm. Oats is one of the most sprayed crops in this country right now with glyphosate and they're spraying it really heavily on oats. So if you're not getting organic oat milk, which the majority of them are not, you're basically getting starchy glyphosate juice. That's gross to think about. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Oh man. One of the things they also say is natural flavors on the packaging, but that's actually not good for you, right? Yeah, it's interesting. So there's artificial flavors, which is, you know, artificial flavors is pretty self-explanatory. And then there's natural, which is really confusing. The problem with natural flavors, and I want to reiterate this, not every single one of them is bad, but the problem with natural flavors and why so many people are sounding the alarms is that it's an umbrella term and there's hundreds of different chemicals and or ingredients, compounds that can be classified under natural flavors. Mm -hmm. And so if the company themselves is not transparent about what goes into their natural flavors, you really have no idea what goes in there. I mean, there's um, (laughs) like years ago, I found out about this and I was so grossed out. There's a, uh, I forgot what the actual compound is called, but it's for vanilla flavoring. They use a, something that comes out of a beaver's. I saw this. Yeah. (laughs) And this is true. You can look this up, Um, but they consider it natural because it's coming from an animal. (laughs) And so that's the biggest problem with natural flavors. And so, you know, sometimes like on my Instagram, I'll post something that has natural flavors and people will be like, oh, I thought you said to avoid them. I only consume them from companies that I know that are very transparent about their ingredients. Right. What about sugar free? Oh yeah, this is, I always joke, am I allowed to cuss on this show? Okay, so I always joke that sugar-free is basically a chemical storm. It's like another word for (laughs) chemical storm because you can almost guarantee that if it says sugar-free on the front of the package, that it's gonna have artificial sweeteners. Mm. Um, Now there's a big difference between something like a natural sweetener, like if you get 100% pure stevia or 100% pure monk fruit, Mm -hmm. those are both naturally occurring in nature. Stevia is a plant. Um, and monk fruit is uh, called monk fruit because the monks were the ones that first started consuming it and it comes from a fruit. Mm. Um, but the problem is, is that the majority of these companies saying that they're sugar-free are using things like aspartame, um, ACE-K, or uh, I always forget how to say it. I say, call it ACE-K, but it's ace, ace potassium. Mm. I always forget how to say that. Um, aspartame and sucralose. Mm. And the problem with these artificial sweeteners is they've actually both been under heat uh, the last like month or so in the news because aspartame, the World Health Organization, is about to deem a possible human carcinogen. Whoa. 
Yeah. And it's a really long time coming because actually back in, I believe it was the 80s when they were first trying to introduce it into the food supply, um, there was a top scientist that was trying to block that from yeah. it being allowed in our food because he was seeing a possible link to tumors. And this was back in the 80s. Yeah. And now the World Health Organization is like, okay, we're we're about to like name this as a possible human carcinogen, meaning that there's a big connection to cancer. Mm -hmm. And then with sucralose, um, it's also known as Splenda. And it's found in a lot of energy drinks and a lot of the sugar-free products that we see. And there was a study that just came out linking it to le leaky gut syndrome, which I'll explain in a second. And then they also named it a genotoxin, which mm -hmm. means that it damages our DNA. Jeez. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Splenda. They used to have that at every restaurant, like in the container. I know. It's really, it's really concerning. And every time I post about this, people will write me and say, oh, but it says in the study you have to consume X amount of it for it to be a problem. Mm. But the problem in the study that they found is that it bioaccumulates, meaning that over time it accumulates more in your body. It's not like your body just flushes it out and gets rid right. of it. It accumulates wow. in the body. So even if you're having like a little bit here and there, well, what happens if you're drinking it every single day for three years? That's you know? scary. So it just stays in your body. Yeah. yeah, that's probably not good for you then. <laughs> no, it's really bad. And you also talk about uh, beauty products and the yeah. effects that they have on your body. What are some of the effects they can have? Yeah, so this is a, a newer concept for a lot of people, but we forget that our skin is our largest organ. So whatever you're putting on your body is going to end up in your bloodstream because um, you know it seeps through our pores. And beauty products are a big concern because it's not, they're not as regulated as people think. Mm -hmm. um, there was a documentary and the name of the documentary is, I've lost it. So I'll give it to you later if you want to put it in the okay. show notes. But um, it was pretty incredible. It was just a couple of years ago and they were basically revealing all of the dirty things about our beauty products. And one of the most concerning ones was that um, many of the the pressed powders, so like eyeshadow, any sort of like powder, like blush, anything that women put on their face, um, has something called talc in it. Mm. And while talc is a naturally occurring element, it also has another naturally occurring element um, called asbestos. Whoa. And they were finding this talc was really, really high in asbestos. And you know what happens when you spread a powder on your face? Well, you're also inhaling it in your lungs. Mm -hmm. So there's a really big connection apparently with that um, and many different cancers in women, which is really concerning. Also, a lot of these beauty products contain fragrance and fragrance similar to natural flavors is an umbrella term. So companies can put basically any chemical compound they want in there and just call it fragrance. And we have no idea what's actually in there. Wow. Yeah. And it's incredibly concerning because fragrance is now um, being linked to various cancers. It's also being called an endocrine disruptor, meaning that it's disrupting our endocrine systems and our endocrine systems are what run our hormones. Mm. And if you are disrupting your endocrine system, um, it can lead to cancers or thyroid issues or autoimmune disorders. And when you look at the amount of beauty products that women put on their body every single day between, let's think about like, let's just go through like a woman's day, right? So mm -hmm. shampoo, conditioner, body wash, then you get out of the shower and you put on lotion, fragrance, mm -hmm. any sort of skincare products, um, and then makeup. And they, they believe that on average, most women are putting 168 different chemicals on their body every single day. And we have no idea what the effects are of that when they're all mixed in the body, right? Yeah. It's pretty concerning. That's um, very concerning. Yeah. And then there's, a, there's one more with beauty products that's concerning. They put a lot of preservatives in there. And it makes sense because obviously they want it to last for a long time. Um, but the problem is, is that um, there's one called parabens. There's like a bunch of different parabens that are used that are preservatives. And mm -hmm. there's been a link to a lot of different disorders, um, a possible link to cancer. So it's just we're putting too many chemicals on our body in, a, in and around our body yeah. that – you know, it's concerning over time because our bodies are very resilient. Mm -hmm. And I like to remind people of this. When I tell all this, I know it's a lot of information and it can be really scary. But one really cool empowering thing is that our bodies are incredibly resilient mm. and we're meant to take a, a certain amount of stress on. The problem is, is that because we're getting exposed in so many different areas right now, it's like our tap water, it's pesticides in our food, it's in our beauty products, it's in our cleaning products, mm -hmm. that we need to be mindful and try to, it's all about lessening your burden, right? right. It's not like about being completely perfect. No one's perfect. We're going to get exposed. It's okay. You have to just like let it go and not try not to stress about it. Do the best you can. Limit your toxin burden load as much as possible. Buy non-toxic beauty products. Buy non-toxic cleaning products. Mm. Filter your water. Don't drink tap water. And then another um, great way is to just... Uh, focus on detoxing your body. Yeah, You want to support the, detox the detoxification pathways of the body. Sweat. If you have access to a sauna, that's an amazing, incredible way to sweat. You can also just literally go for a run outside. Mm -hmm. um, another really accessible way, if you don't have a sauna, 
put draw like a really hot bath and put a ton of Epsom salts in there. Yeah. Hot enough to where it's not burning you, but hot enough to where it will cause you to sweat. And then also like if you have access to it, if you can get lymphatic massages, that's another great mm. way. If you have a partner, have your partner give you a massage because if you stimulate the lymph system, the lymph system is basically like our sewage of our body. Yeah. And it's what helps helps get rid of all the toxins. How do you stimulate that? Um, so you can look it up online. There's different like movements that you can do. A lot of women are starting to use something called a gosh, gua sha tool mm -hmm. that they use on their face. But I would encourage people to just Google it because I don't know how to explain the whole process. Okay. And then you can look up online. There's like different like movements and stuff. There's a lot of lymphatic uh, therapists out there that post YouTube videos. Yeah. And they'll show you like different movements that you can do on your arms and on your body. And then I would say, lastly, take some supplements um, that help to support those detoxification pathways of the liver. Because mm. everything we get exposed to goes through our liver. Everything right. we eat, everything we drink, everything that's on our skin, everything we inhale, everything gets pushed out through the liver. Wow. So we, I tell everyone that you probably want to be taking some sort of liver support. I like a brand called, or um, I don't remember the brand, but it's a supplement called Liver Rescue that's amazing. It has like milk thistle in there, which is really good for the liver. Mm -hmm. And then there's also glutathione, which is the body's master antioxidant. We produce it, but if you want to supplement it as well, it's also going to help support those detoxification pathways. Man, this is so good to know. Yeah, I just switched to like natural shampoo, natural deodorant, conditioner, body wash. That's but amazing. my whole life, I wasn't even aware of that. It was I harmful. Know. I know, and it's concerning, and most people aren't. And so that's why, you know, I said this very early on in the show, but if you are using those products right now, there's no shame in it. You know, like this isn't, common knowledge you yeah. know we're not being taught this conventionally and so once you learn this just do better you know yeah even cleaning products now right like laundry pods dish detergent pods yeah all of that stuff yeah so the laundry one is really concerning because i think a lot of people don't make this connection so what you're washing your clothes with um obviously your clothes you're wearing all day especially if you like go to the gym and you work out it opens your pores and then mm -hmm. whatever chemicals are in that laundry detergent are going to seep through the pores mm -hmm. and a lot of these conventional laundry detergents have really toxic harmful ingredients in it yeah. any of the cleaning products if you look in the back of the label there's like caution warnings on there about the <laughs> toxicity of it you That's know crazy. and then we're putting it on our skin and then you think about, so you're wearing your clothes all day and then you get in bed and then you sleep for eight hours in your sheets that you washed your laundry deter or that you washed with that laundry detergent. Mm -hmm. So that's a really big one that you want to be aware of um, is the laundry detergent. And then obviously, you know, the dishwasher pods, I, I will say I'm not as worried about those, but there is a bit of a concern still because when you're washing your dishes with that, there is going to be that film on the dishes and then you're eating from it, right. you know? And so... Um, for anyone listening that this is like all new information and it's really overwhelming, know that there's a lot of really amazing companies that are making really effective cleaning products that don't have all these harmful chemicals in them. Yeah. Isn't Tide Pods like banned in Europe or something? Oh, I actually haven't heard that. We should I look that up. They're banned somewhere, but yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised. They're, yeah. they're incredibly they're, toxic. I know they're pushing for it in New York. Or, oh yeah yeah okay i did i did see that yeah, yeah. because of the um i believe it was because of the level of pfas is in it wow yeah, yeah that's scary man cause, i know yeah you wear clothes every day i mean <laughs> i know you're basically wearing a detergent <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then you're being exposed to it in your pores yeah, yeah it's it's wild yeah there it's a lot there's a lot of it's a lot to take into <laughs> it is um one of the interesting takes i saw on your instagram was about high intensity classes a lot of people go to those those spinning classes and stuff, but you weren't a fan of it, right? Yeah, you know, it. I think some of this is individual, but I will say, so when I got, I got very into SoulCycle a couple of years ago, and I still, I love the workout. So this is not like anything on them. It's more just like, at least for me, I was doing workouts like six to seven days a week, mm -hmm. sometimes doing two classes a day. Mm. And I completely wore my body out. And it was actually, the ex I got the exact opposite results that I wanted. I was wow. very bloated. I couldn't lose the last like five pounds that I was really hoping to get rid of. And what what I, looking back, what I realized is that my body was in such a constant state of stress that it was actually messing with my hormones. Mm. And I was raising my cortisol, cortisol to such high levels that I was dealing with a lot of anxiety. I was having panic attacks and I couldn't understand. I was like, why am I so anxious all the time? And why am I so bloated? And then I actually had a girlfriend who pointed it out and she said, you know, I think these really high intensity exercises that are putting a lot of stress on your body and raising your cortisol to really unhealthy levels every single day might not actually be that good for you. Mm. And then around, so around that time, maybe it was about six months before I was like, okay, I was really scared because I thought, you know, I'm going to gain all this weight and my body is going to change and I'm going to be unhealthy. But I was like, I'm just going to stop all the high intensity workouts and I'm just going to walk every day. Mm. 
And then actually um, a couple months later, we went into the pandemic and then all the cl classes shut down. Mm -hmm. All I had access to was outdoors and hiking. And it ended up being like a beautiful blessing in disguise in, in that realm. Um, and then for the last couple of years, all I've done is hiked. I've more recently started bringing back in strength exercises, yeah. but for me, I needed to really heal my relationship with exercise because I was going so hard that I was over exercising. Mm -hmm. And I think this is not really talked about a lot, especially for women. Our hormones are so much more um, delicate compared mm -hmm. to men because men, you guys are just on a 24 hour cycle with your testosterone. You're very consistent. Mm. Women have four different cycles in the month. And depending on where we are in our cycle is going to be dependent on where our hormones are at, where our energy is. Mm. And that was a big thing too, is that, you know, half the time I was forcing myself in these workouts where I was like, I am so exhausted. I can barely get through this. Wow. And then you have an instructor being like, just push yourself. <laughs> like, uh, you know, don't listen to your mind, listen to your body. Uh, and looking back, I'm like, that was kind of harmful advice because I needed to, right before starting my period, I actually needed to listen to my body and slow down and do more lower impact workouts. Wow, so there's certain weeks that you have more energy basically. Exactly, yeah. Interesting, yeah. I gotta say, hiking is pretty hard. I yeah, went it last is. week and I was sore for four days after. <laughs> That's amazing. And I, uh, yeah, shout out to hikers, man. That, it's definitely pretty hard. <laughs> it is, and if you get a pretty big incline, it's a really great oh, workout. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I got too ambitious because we were climbing a mountain. Yeah. In Sedona, but yeah. Oh, it was, in Sedona. Yeah, it was really There's amazing hard. hikes out there. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Definitely wow. go back. Yeah. Well, that's been this episode's been so inf insightful. Thanks so much for all the knowledge. Is there anything you want to close off with? You know, I already said this, but I want to reiterate it just because I, I feel like this is really important for people to hear. I know that this is a lot of information. It can be really daunting. And sometimes people just want to throw their hands up in the air and say, you know what? I just can't even deal with this. I would say like, take it one step at a time. I've been doing this for like 15 years. You're not going to change all your habits overnight. You're not going to change all your cleaning products overnight. You're not going to change your eating habits. Just try to tackle like one thing a week. Be mm. like, okay, this week I'm going to, you know, clean out all my beauty products and I'm going to start looking for more non-toxic stuff. And also, like I said too, you know, try not to go into this place of fear mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, there's only so much we can control, right? You know, and so control what you can. And then I just say, send the rest, just send it, you know, like there's only so much you can do, do the best you can try to lower your toxic burden, you know, work out, sweat, like just, just do the best you can. Right. And there's a lot of amazing resources. Um, there's a website called EWG Skin Deep. It's the environmental working group. Mm. And you can go on there and you can check all your different beauty products, cleaning products, et cetera. And they, race, they rate them based on toxicity levels. Mm. And that's a great resource if you're looking to swap out for cleaner products because yeah. they have a lot of amazing swaps. That's cool. Yeah, and, um, and then for grocery store, there's an app called Trash Panda. And you can scan stuff in the grocery store and it'll tell you based on um, the ingredients in there, whether it's you know a harmful product or it's a healthy product. So there's a lot of amazing resources that can help you with the swaps and just you know try not to stress about it. And I wanna say one more thing. I talk about all this in my podcast, Real Foodology Podcast. And um, I do a lot of videos on my Instagram, which is also Real Foodology. Nice, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Yep, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.